Welcome to another Lifestyle of Eden podcast. Today we're going to have one of my favorite topics. It's a very passionate one for me, but but it's also one that tends to make people's hair stand up and ruffle some feathers a little bit. And it's about two different concepts for me. It's if it fits your macros or macro-based diet versus a nutrient-dense diet. Now, here's the thing. I've never been, ever, for over 10 years now in my practice, it's been about 12 years I've been in my practice, but for well over 10 years, I have never been a fan of the macro dieting, okay? I'll explain parts of the macro dieting that I am okay with, and then the parts why I'm just not okay with it. Now, here's the thing about the macro dieting. For those of you who don't know, macro nutrients would be like proteins, carbs, and fats. So if we say a macro diet, what we're saying is like in theory, right? Just like some guy or whatever, you say, hey, here's your macros. It's, hey, you know, have 2,000 calories a day. Consi- your macros are consisting of 180 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, and 60 grams of fat. Like, I'm not saying that equals 2,000 calories, but that's what a macro diet is. We're just giving you the outline and saying, hey, go do this. Now, here's the thing. If that macro diet is having to do with that and then specific food lists, like I have a food list on my on my computer for certain clients when they say, hey, do you have any other options for this or whatever? And it's like, yeah, if you're going to do that macro diet, stick to, you know, here are your proteins, lean beef, chicken, salmon, mahi-mahi, ahi tuna steaks, cod, orange roughy, you know, whey protein powder from New Ethics, um, you know, vegan, you know, Metapure powder from New Ethics, or you're giving them that, then your carbs, hey, white rice, brown rice, sweet potato, red potato, white potato, uh, you know, oatmeal, quinoa, cream of rice, cream of wheat, you know, fruit, you know, you, you start putting foods in there to stay with, or the fats, you list the omega-3 fats, like, you know, you've got your different nuts and seeds, you've got your coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, macadamia oil, some people like to use avocado oil, I don't use the avocado oil, some people might say ghee, or, you know, whole eggs, the yolk from whole eggs, you know, you start to put foods in there to say, hey, stay within these boundaries, but just develop your macros off of it. Okay, that's fine, especially for the average person. I think that that's, that's great, you know, honestly, because they're starting to live a healthy lifestyle. They're doing it in a way that's very maintainable. They're doing it where it's like, hey, I'm not eating the same meal, you know, all week. That, I think, can be great. I'll still explain its flaws and its shortcomings, but I think that that's great for most people. The macro dieting that I stay away from is the more common macro dieting. And it's the if it fits your macros thing where literally is what it sounds like. Hey, if it fits in your macros, you're good. What that means is now I can still eat Lay's potato chips. I can still eat honey buns. I can still eat Oreos. I can eat the Reese's cups and, you know, the Reese's puff cereals. And please understand something. I love every food I just listed. Like, I love Reese's Puff cereal. I love the Reese's Cups. Now, granted, I don't remember the last time I ate them, but I think they're delicious. I just don't eat them because whenever I have my own cheat meals or off meals, like, I prefer, like, burgers and nachos and if I'm going to go get something like that. But honestly, like, steaks and stuff like that or, like, steak and, like, really good fries are, like, really cool for me. But those foods, I don't say this because they're, like, not delicious. They are delicious, but they're addicting um, and they're very unhealthy for you. But when people start to do this, I honestly, what I say straight up, I'm a very blunt person, and I just say, listen, that is your excuse of a diet because you're too weak-minded and undisciplined to actually eat real food. So people will eat, you know, they'll say, hey, I have 2,000 calories today, or a woman might say, I have like 1,300 calories today, right? Which I'm not telling you that's what a man or woman should stick to. Um, I'm just giving, you know, throwing some random numbers out there. Um, They might say that, and they'll go, oh, okay. Well, tonight, I still really want to make room for my Reese's. And they do this every day. And so, or their ice cream, their bowl of Bluebell ice cream. And they're like, so I'm going to purposely eat really light during the day, and then I'm going to have that. And you're, you're, eating, you're using this to your destruction to eat bad food every day, not realizing that you're killing your metabolism, you're killing your gut microbiome, you're killing your hormones, you're killing your gut health, you're killing your insulin sensitivity, you're doing all of these things to your body that's not good. So now you're using, if it's your macros, which is the most common form of dieting, quite frankly, in a very negative way. Oh, no, hey, I still have 700 macros for today. So, hey, uh, that 
that Whopper from McDonald's, I think it's like 380 and then if I get the small fry and a Diet Coke, I'll stay within the 700 so I can do that today because it's within my macros. Guys, like, it's trash. It's trash. It's literally a way to still live an undisciplined life and just say why I can justify my eating crap and garbage every single day or three or four times a week or whatever. Honestly, common sense will tell you that this is stupid. The only people that are going to argue with me, and by the way, I've seen people do this, competitors getting ready for shows. They do the if it fits your macros in that way, getting ready for shows. It's literally like an abomination to what, you know, <laughs> like competing really is because they, they have terrible conditioning and quite frankly, they look terrible on stage, but they're competing in these, you know, certain divisions and certain, you know, leagues that are not competitive and whatnot. And, and look, I rejoice with the fact that you lost 80 pounds and this is your weight loss journey. I think that that's awesome. But like I said, you're also still building habits. You're replacing one bad habit with one that's not much better. Um, I can I can lose weight just by lowering my calories, but still eating Reese's every day. You know, if I was only to eat one Reese's every day and that's my calories, I'm still going to lose weight, but I'm not becoming healthier. I'm not putting on more muscle and dropping more body fat. I'm just losing weight and becoming unhealthy, screwing up my metabolism and hormones along the way. So I think that if you're going to do the macro game, stick to what I first said. You have a list of foods. And then if you want to have your one off meal a week where it's like, hey, I'm going to go get some Mediterranean food, get the pita breads, the hummuses. You want some baba ganoush, go ahead and get that. You want the you want the baklava and, you know, a dessert piece. Go, you know, have it. Enjoy yourself. You're human. Okay. But the thing is, you're not doing that every day. You're not even doing it multiple times a week. Okay. And plus you earned it because you actually ate very clean. You exercised. You you're getting forward with your results your blood work is actually proving that you're becoming healthier and all these different things but it has to do with discipline we have no discipline though and then we clap our hands for people that don't exercise discipline and so i think that you need to stick to a range of foods with these things but i'll still explain the flaws with that okay because like i said it's it's about the hormonal response now granted if i take the mat for example if i take the macros from a row of oreos carbs, fats, and proteins. And I get those same macros from, say, chicken, pineapple, green beans, and white rice, just as an example here. Do you really think that my body is going to respond the same way because it fit my macros? This is common sense. No, it's not going to react the same way. My thyroid is not going to react the same way. My hormones are not going to react the same way. My metabolic function is not going to react the same way. The tight junctions with my gut microbiome are not going to react the same way. My energy and my mental clarity and focus and serotonin and dopamine are not going to react the same way. Nothing is going to react the same way. It's ridiculous. So if we're going to do it, like I said, stick to healthy foods and do if it fits your macros. Stick to a macro diet. And this is, like I said, I think that that's actually probably the most sustainable diet. I think at first you've got to stick to what I'm going to consider a nutrient dense diet, which I'll explain in a minute. And then you can move more to macros once you reach your fitness goals. I always tell people once you get lean, keeping abs is not hard. Now it's like instead of, you know, salmon, like if I want to go get a steak or I want to have chicken and I'm going to have some, you know, a big salad with a bunch of olive oil and different things like that, like, that's not going to kill me. I'm still staying within a range of like similar macronutrients and this, that, or the other. Sure, the foods are a little different. It'll have a little bit of different hormonal response, but it's no big deal. I'm maintaining. I'm living a lifestyle now. But at first, you've got to learn some ins and outs of nutrition. So when I say at first, I'm not talking for two months. Honestly, it's probably going to be a year or two years or three years. You know, you really developing this entire lifestyle that's going to sustain you for the next 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years onto your children and your children's children. But the reason that I say that even eating with healthy foods, if it fits your macros, it's about the hormonal response. So let's just say with your macros, you are eating in your diet, you're eating like all rice peanuts, which are like considered a healthy fat. They're high in omega sixes, but they're healthy fat. Okay. Peanuts, rice, steak, and chicken, right? Like those are like heavy predominant foods in your diet, right? That's going to be completely different on your body. 
if I was then if I was to feed you things like omega three oil fats, right, or even walnuts. So you're still eating nuts, but not peanuts. You're eating walnuts or pecans, or the macadamia oil, omega three fats with wild caught fish, and whole omega three eggs that are all high in omega threes and anti inflammatory properties. Salmon. Whereas if I have the steak and the chicken, this is not going to be as high as anti-inflammatory. Are they healthy foods? Yes. But the hormonal response even then is totally different. And one thing that people are, are starting to realize with my regimens is I put them on what we call a flush diet where I'm flooding your body with omega-3s. I'm actually able to raise your calories about 1,000 calories higher than what you would eat because I'm flooding you with omega-3s. And so if you were eating 1,300 calories, I have women that are on 21, 22, 2300 calories. If you're a guy that eats 2,000 calories, on that healthy diet, I'm able to put you on 3,000, 3,100. I'm eating almost 3,300 calories a day doing no cardio and only training three days a week. And I'm dropping body fat drastically. Why? Because I'm flooding my body with omega-3s. I'm upregulating thyroid. I'm upregulating hormones. I'm upregulating my metabolic functions. My body is so anti-inflammatory. The water is completely dispensed from my body and this, that, or the other. So I'm actually responding better than if I was to be eating a lot of steak or chicken and not applying as much fruit to my diet and just having you know certain things like white rice or whatever. So this is why I always prefer to have a nutrient-dense diet. Because there's certain purposes and reasons for why I'm doing everything. So if somebody asked me, hey, Nick, instead of this wild salmon, can I have top sirloin tonight? You know, from a, from a macronutrient perspective, sure. But from a hormonal response and metabolic function and thyroid function and hormonal response, it's not going to be the same. Now, is it better than going and getting that Big Mac? 100%. If that's what we're comparing it against, then eat the top sirloin all day. But... When it comes to these different goals that I have for myself or for my clients, the, there's nothing that's going to beat a nutrient-dense diet that's perfectly prescribed to you, not, hey, this was to her, let me copy and paste it and send to you, to you, nutrient-dense based upon what's going on with your blood work, what's going on with your gut microbiome, where your metabolic function is, what I have to do, because the thing is, with these diets, with these flush diets, I also might put in organic juices that are 100% juice, like 100% pear juice, where if you turn and look at the ingredients, it's 100% organic pears or 100% organic apples for apple juice or these different things. I might put that stuff in your diet, right? Especially if I want to lower glucagon, which is released from your pancreas to signal to your liver to release more glucose into the bloodstream. I want to lower glucagon and start to spike your insulin again to start to regulate hormones. But if you have a gut issue like SIBO or something, I'm, I'm probably not going to be putting that in your regimen. Or like if you're a type 1 diabetic, I'm not going to be putting that in your regimen. I might stick to certain flush diet techniques without all of those real fast sugars and these different things. I'm going to stick to more fibrous foods, right? So rather than cream of rice, I'm going to do the oatmeal. Rather than, you know, white rice, I might do the brown rice. Or, you know, I'll just switch to some of these different things. But this, these are the things that you can, you simply cannot do with a garbage if it fits your macros diet. Like I said, which is like, hey, I'm going to fit the 300 calories from this Budweiser into my diet. It's like, okay, you're killing your hormones. You're killing your brain cells. You're killing your liver, which if you ruin your liver, like with bad foods. So when people want to add in all of these different bad foods, these high sugar foods, you're going to get fatty liver. Your liver is what's actually going to be able to process things to help you burn fat better. So I'll give you a story. This was in 20, 2020. Yeah, 2020. And I remember I was on my diet, but every weekend I was crucifying myself with a cheat meal loaded with sugar. I used to have a very bad food addiction, which my programs now are developed to work with people with food addictions to help them get off of certain things. And I would eat clean all week, but then on the weekend I'd eat myself sick to throwing up. Like this was while I was in ministry too still. It was a struggle I had. I would go to the Lord and I would ask him to please heal me of these things. And it was a very, it was a very hard thing. It happened every week. It was like the things that I, it's like Paul said in Romans 7, the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. I would always do the things that I didn't want to do. My flesh was warring against my spirit. And so I remember this happened every week, every week, every week. And the Lord showed me a dream that my liver was fatty. I had a fatty liver. So I went and got my blood work done. Sure enough, my liver enzymes were spiked. So I, re <laughs> I remember 
I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut out sugar, not fruits and stuff, but I'm going to cut out desserts for like two months. I'm going to see what happens. In three weeks, please understand what I'm about to tell you. In three weeks, I got my blood tested, my blood work done, weighed myself, did an in-body scan, everything. In three weeks, I lost seven pounds of body fat. I did not change a thing with my diet, except that on the weekends for my cheat meals, I just wasn't doing sugar anymore. I was still doing things like burgers, but I wasn't eating all the crazy sugars and cookies and desserts and ice cream. What happened? My fatty liver healed itself. I no longer had fatty liver and it was able to process my food. I lost seven pounds of body fat. Seven pounds of body fat in three weeks. That's unheard of. That's not even heard of. That's, un, that's unimaginable. When I did my in-body scan and I got my blood work done, the nurse practitioner goes, Nick, your liver enzymes are incredible. And your body, we actually got to see from where on my body the weight was lost. Nick, you lost a pound on your arms, a pound here on this arm. You lost three pounds around your core. You lost one pound or a pound and a half on each leg. Like, we got to see this come off. Why? Because my liver healed. And so this is why I say d- macros, d- was I fitting macros? Whether I was fitting macros or not, it's causing fatty liver. So you're doing all these different things. Like I said, that's also going to be causing you to stop spiking insulin properly. You're going to be dumping glucagon. You're going to be having this. You're going to be having that. You're going to lower your testosterone. You're going to raise estrogen. You're going to mess with your thyroid function. So it's not even, it's, it's common sense, scientifically proven, and just flat out arrogance. It's not even ignorance. It's, it's common sense, guys. It's arrogance to sit there and say, well, Nick, you're wrong about the if it fits your macro. No, I'm not. It's common sense. Like I said, if you want to do if it fits your macros with clean food and have a food list, phenomenal. Mazel tov. Do it. That's a great lifestyle way. But like I said, even then, it's still limited to where if I was to have precise dieting techniques of, hey, you're eating this food at this meal. This is why you're eating it because it's different than this, even if it's healthy. Like I said, if it's, if it's a mahi-mahi versus a lean beef, it's still going to be a totally different hormonal response. And I'm going to be able to feed you up more food and do this, that, or the other. For me, personally, and from what I've experienced most with my clients, most human beings want to eat a lot of food. The reason we don't eat a lot of food is because we're like, well, no, I can't because I've got to, I'm going to gain weight or whatever. So what if you could eat the most food and drop the most weight? And I'm not talking about, you know, I've been vegan before. I was vegan for years, right? And when I was a vegan, I could eat so much food. It was unbelievable. I could eat so much food because I had tons of fruits, tons of vegetables, tons of fiber, low fat. It was low protein. And, it, and I could just eat dumps of food five times a day and I wouldn't gain a pound. I'd be dropping body fat. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, hey, let's eat loads of food, but it's these big salads and it's just vegetables. That's not what I'm talking about. What if you could just eat tons of food? Like, for example, my last meal, my la- I literally just had it an hour and a half ago after I got done training. My last meal was like 250 grams of mahi-mahi, which in ounces, I don't know the exact ounce. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this and the haters say, oh, he's wrong, he doesn't know nutrition. Like in ounces, that's probably like, Eight ounces, maybe nine, maybe eight between eight and nine, I think, which is a lot of food, by the way. Generally, like when it comes to chicken and beef, I eat about six ounces. Okay, just keep that in mind. So it's like eight or nine ounces of fish. I had 270 grams of brown rice. Now, keep in mind, a cup is about 150 grams. So I just had almost two cups of brown rice, 150 grams of pineapple. I had one whole kiwi, I had 16 grams of coconut oil, and, you know, vegetables. My plate was overflowing. I literally had rice falling off my plate, okay? So I'm eating these massive amounts of food and just dropping weight, getting beautiful abs, getting shredded, you know, doing this, that, and the other, and I'm doing that every day, all day. Why? Because we are purposely doing certain things with omega-3s and keeping the hormonal response properly, where my thyroid function is through the roof, roof. I'm eating like 32, 3300 calories a day with no cardio right now. All I'm doing is walking outside 10, 15,000 steps a day, uh, but no elevation of heart rate, um, these different things. So that's really the goal is how can I eat more food but drop more weight? Or if I'm not dropping weight, to keep that weight that I'm gaining very lean. 
Like I posted my pro my 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 pictures, you know, a couple weeks ago on my social media. I was seven pounds heavier. I was two twenty four in January and I was two thirty one. Yet in 224 in January, I had no abs, 231, my muscles are shredded, my abs are peeled, I've got veins popping out of my chest and shoulders and everything else. Why? I put on all this muscle, I'm eating all this food, but I'm dropping the body fat, I'm dropping the water, I'm dropping the inflammation, my thyroid function is through the roof, my hunger is at a level 10, my metabolic function's insane, my hormones are proper, my estrogen's nice and level, my testosterone's through the roof, my free testosterone's through the roof. I've got all these benefits because of what we're doing with the flush diet. My liver is healthy. My kidneys are healthy. I'm hydrated. The body's functioning. It's running like a machine. So I personally would rather do this and have a nutrient-dense diet but still be flexible. It's like, hey, you know what? Instead of pineapple or instead of blueberries today, I'm going to do blackberries. Or instead of that, you know what? I want mango. Or you know what? Today, I want to have some durian fruit or something like that. You know, you start to, you can change some different things, but for the most part, it's a focused, channeled, nutrient-dense diet that's going to do better than, like I said, obviously the crap if it fits your macros deal, but even the healthy if it fits your macros deal. But there will be different seasons where I'm like, the, the, the if it fits your macros, that's nice because it'll be like, if I'm traveling, like I travel a lot. So when I get to the airport, I'm not, I'm not tripping out because guess what? I'm going to either go get like a pre-made thing of just all fruit that's already cut up and say, dude, it's, it's clean food. Like I'm just going to grab that and my body's feeling great. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling energized. Or now in the airports, there's all these like salad bars or foods where it's just, you know, fresh chicken, fresh made rice, potatoes, vegetables, uh, fruits. They have Israeli salads, right? With like clean extra virgin olive oil on it, all these different things. Or, you know, I just go grab some sushi or I go to a poke place or, you know, at certain places like I was at the airport just the other day and when I was coming home from Cali and, you know, one of the places it was expensive, but it was like, hey, you can have uh, clean cut red potatoes with no oil and then you can get a filet mignon. Is it like $40? So yeah, that was a little expensive, but still like I'm eating phenomenal food on the go and I'm making this a lifestyle. And then you just figure out ways to do this and make it a lifestyle, develop it into a lifestyle. But like I said, I've been 12, I've actually, I started this when I was about 15, so I'm 15 years deep into this. But under professional um, nutrition, I started that whenever I was 18, under professionals. And ever since then, I never stopped. So it's been over 12 years to where people are like, well, I want to do what Nick's doing. Okay, there's levels to this, and I had to pay my dues to get to where I'm at, okay? So I am not a fan of if it fits your macros. And the only way I am is if it's still within the guidelines of eating healthy food that is still going to probably benefit you. But even then, there's many people that those foods are not getting them to their weight loss goals. And it's because they're so high in omega-6s, they're not balanced with their, with their omega-3s in their body. Their body's actually inflammatory. Like I said, I love peanuts. I think peanuts are great. But they're so much different than walnuts. Am I saying don't eat peanuts? No, I literally have peanuts and peanut butter in my kitchen. But the hormonal response is 100% different. And I hardly ever put peanuts in my clients' diets. If I do, it's because they're like in an off-season as a competitor or they're just a lifestyle client where I'm like, yeah, you know what? For right now, for the next few weeks, have 16 grams of peanut butter a day. Put it on your toast or have it with your snack or with an apple or, you know, something or in your protein shake at night or something like that. You know, there's just different things of why I'm doing what I'm doing. But even then, it's a nutrient-dense diet. It's focused. It's channeled. It's calculated for that individual. So the unhealthy of your macros, get that off the table. It's not even a question. It's not a discussion. It's not an intelligent discussion anyway. But the healthy of your macros, yes, I think it's great to a point. I still think that you need some knowledge and background of hormonal responses to be able to manipulate certain things to get the results that you want to get. But I think it's a great lifestyle sustaining practice and way to live your life and to raise your family. Because in that, you're still eating you know, proper meats. Generally, hopefully you're eating grass-fed, grass-finished beef. You're eating cage-free, soy-free, corn-free, omega-3 eggs. You're eating you know, rices, whether it's white rice, brown rice, black rice, wild rice, you're eating sweet potato, red potato, white potato, Japanese sweet potato, um, purple sweet potato or purple potato, you're eating, if you want to occasionally have the Ezekiel products in there, that's okay too, you got to be careful because of the zonulin and the gluten, that can really cause a lot of digestive issues if you eat too much of it um, and start to open up tight junctions within your gut microbiome. 
uh, eating all different types of fruits, nuts, seeds, all these different things. But like I said, you can still develop this diet to where it's all beef. Sure, you have some rice in there, chicken, peanuts, and this, that, or the other. And before you know it, you're literally eating an all omega-6 inflammatory diet of healthy foods. And this is the problem that I'm talking about is you're actually going to gain weight. You're going to become inflamed. You can still get sick on these things and have an overdriven immune system or you know mess up your metabolism and your hormones or whatever. So even with these healthy foods, if they're not done right, are they healthy? You know, and so at least not the way it's being used. My clients find the best results and myself through a nutrient dense diet, not only from a perspective of results and health, but honestly, I bet if you were to get 80% of my clients, I bet they would honestly even say even from the perspective of preference and flavor. Because you start to feel so good doing these things that your taste buds become like bland, like in the context of like, you look at like a fried food and you go, no, I know that when I eat that, I'm going to feel like crap. And I love how I'm feeling. I'm obsessed with how much energy I have. I'm obsessed with waking up early and being able to jump out of bed and just be mentally alert and clear, clarity and everything else. Um, but then, like I said, even from a health perspective, you know, a lot of my clients love being able to have chicken fried rice. They'll do the rice. They'll do the chicken. Um, I might throw in some omega-3 eggs in there. And they'll do like coconut aminos or something like that. We're, we're putting the omega-3s in there. Or my clients love, you know, the mahi-mahi or salmon and rice or, you know, these, you know, pot certain potatoes and different things. It's all delicious food. And sometimes I'll even treat them to like salmon tacos or fish tacos. Hey, go get the Ezekiel burrito wraps or something like that. And, you know, have this mahi-mahi, have some fish tacos. And now you're loaded up with fiber and these different foods, delicious a lot of my clients love sushi. It's like, great, now you're going out and getting some good fish. You might be getting some avocados in there. Um, you're having some you know, soy sauce. And stuff. So it's super sustainable, super delicious, super satisfying. But you're also becoming the healthiest you mentally, physically, spiritually, hormonally, and with your gut microbiome. And you're getting the best results that you've ever had. So that's my take. I think that my take has some weight given that I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, given that I've had absolutely phenomenal, and I mean phenomenal, results in my practice for the last 12 years. I've studied under some of the top doctors, nutritionists, dietitians, gastroenterologists, nurse practitioners, and gut microbiome specialists, as well as hormone specialists in the world. And it has been such a sustainable lifestyle for me, as well as seeing the fruit of, hey, I used to struggle with this food or with this or with that, and now I, I thank the Lord I don't struggle with those things anymore. So if this is something that rings true with you and you want to try this out, you want to see how you can actually jump your calories, 800 to 1,200 calories more than what you're eating, and not only will you not gain a single pound, but you'll actually drop weight, upregulate thyroid, upregulate hormones, generate healthy metabolism, create a healthy metabolism, and have anti-inflammatory response, removing joint pain, sleep issues, uh, weight gain, weight loss resistance, water weight, you know, all of these different things. If this is something you want to try out, feel free to reach out to me at lifestyleofeden at gmail.com. I hope this is informative. I hope it helps you. I hope it makes sense. Um, and if you got any questions, guys, please reach out. Stay tuned for the next one.